Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City Council meeting this Monday, November the 6th, 2017, at 7 p.m. here at Greenwood City Hall. Ms. Gary, would you call the roll, please? AC Brown? Here. Dr. Lee Johnson is absent. Rob Powell? Here. Daniel Denny? Here. Tim Here. Lex Terry is absent. There is a quorum. Thank you. If you would please rise, and we will start out this evening with a prayer by Brother Ronnie Hill from the First Baptist, followed by our Pledge of Allegiance by Chief Bill Dawson. Oh, we thank you so much for our community, for all the blessings that we enjoy. Thank you for uh, the leadership that we uh, are blessed with in this community. We ask your guidance and direction on this meeting. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy and for the things that uh, Greenwood offers. Lord, we acknowledge that it all comes from you. So, uh, God, we thank you. Again, we ask you to, to guide and lead what's about to take place. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, I would ask that the council uh, look to the minutes for October the 2nd, 2017 council meeting and that approval on that. Also, let it be noted that uh, Councilman Dr. Johnson is here. Better late than never. Yes. We'll make a motion to approve the minutes, Mr. Mayor, for last week. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Secretary? Yes. Thank you. No mileage report this evening from the mayor's office. Again, just a quick thank you, as I've been doing for the vehicle that the council decided to purchased a few or last year so we're using that instead of my life report. Uh, recognitions and acknowledgments, acknowledgments, excuse me, I would like to uh, first of all thank the city employees. I know I know the street department was heavily involved, first department of course, uh, fire department, everybody that I'm missing uh, that were, were involved with our Halloween Trail of Treats this year. Uh, it got rained on a little bit, got a little soggy. But it was a huge success. Of course, we work in conjunction with the high school, uh, Joel Skaggs, who is the high school uh, to make that happen, make it work, and very successful in uh, a lot of folks this year. So thank you for that. We'll get right into our committee reports. Uh, Sebastian County Boys and Girls Club. I know these folks have typically, I think, have turned in a written report. Uh, I don't see Kenny here tonight, so. Okay. So if you have any questions in, in regarding his report, you can get with uh, Tammy and we'll relay those back to Kenny. I know they're real busy uh, with all their events out there. So uh, SRCA, Lisa Moore is not here, but she also turned in a report. And I was supposed to invitation, invitation to lunch uh, for everybody, I think, the council for sure. For the elected officials, sorry. <laughs> elected officials for sure. Uh, Friday, they're having their Thanksgiving lunch over at the Senior Center, so let it hurt. And again, if you have any questions on our report, let us know. Parks Commission, don't see Ms. Bell here this evening. And, oh, I'm sorry. There she is. <laughs> so if you have any uh, questions for Ms. Do you have anything, Ms. Bell, that you want to? No. Okay. If they have questions, they can relay that. Um, Gary Grimes Consulting. I believe Gary's here this evening. Don't mind, I had to just, just start something. <clears throat> we got a busy night. Uh, with me tonight is Representative Matt Kitch. Matt, if you come forward. Matt has a, uh, is our, our is District 76 state representative and was running for state senate. But, but also, uh, I wanted to share with you something that he's seen in a little town that's uh, not too far from us. Uh, and also, uh, I think it's going to talk about highways just a little bit. I know we're I know we're we're busy. And we're going to move on. But, uh, also, uh, I think we, we need to think about and think about our, our law enforcement. 
recommend it after the Southern, uh, the Southern Texas incident. Mm -hmm. I think everybody uh, it was just overwhelmed across the nation. Mm -hmm. Matt. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate the opportunity. I was in a meeting this last week and we were in discussion about economic development and the tremendous things you folks have going on down here and the size of your town and how it's growing. And it brought to mind a visit that I was invited to to a small community in Georgia called Rome, Georgia. I see some heads nodding. If you've ever been to that community, it's a community that's slightly bigger than yours. They're, I think they're up to 35,000 people now. But they were in the 11, 12, 13,000 range and decided to take their community and grow upon all the good things that are going on. And Greenwood, it reminds me a lot of what Greenwood has going on. Your outstanding schools, your athletic departments, your, your city government, the PAC we're in here. And it dawned on me that oftentimes we don't share what we know in a region. And I would just offer to you that Rome, Georgia might be something you want to look at. Mr. Mayor, I, I mentioned it to Gary. I think Gary was actually in the meeting where I brought it up. But they do economic development, right? They literally, Randy Zook at our state chamber took the economic developers, the job creators from this state, to a town of 30, at that time 30,000 people to look at what they're doing with the job creation and how they treat their educating the next generation of folks to be prepared to stay and work in their environments, etc. So, and then this morning at lunch or the meeting you chaired earlier, you mentioned, I asked if there's anything you want me to talk about if you want a brief update with RETA, uh, Regional Inter Intermodal Transportation Authority, building your roads, railroads, river ports, and <coughs> airports in this region, both Sebastian and Crawford County. Uh, we received in the mail today that we've been approved as a project to study and ask for somebody to bid on building the bridge in the I-49 from Chaff to Crossing up to Alma, east of Kibler. Now we knew that was on the STIP, State Highway Improvement Plan, for the, from now until 2020, but to get the letter from the director of the Highway Commission saying you have been approved and funded, that means we spent dollars on that project, federal dollars, and there's federal law that requires you to be under construction inside five years when you spend federal dollars. So if we don't get company X to come build that road, that interstate, Director Bennett from the Arkansas Highway Transportation Department knows that that's a possibility, but he also knows because he spent the money putting that together, he will have to build that in his budget. The difficulty there is that will take a lot longer. Private public partnerships, P3s, those mm -hmm. tend to get built very fast because they need the revenue stream to support that highway. So I personally think that that's the best way to build that section of road, but I think it's the best way the company that wants to build that road to be a part owner in that road will want to see that road go from here to Queen and not into Texarkana. And I can clearly see them figuring out how to get a peek through the rest of the way. So that's probably the most recent update. We have uh, a live fish on the fishing pole, if you will, big fish, uh, with regard to building something on our river, but it's still in the silent phase of economic development that we've had that year several times in the last month. So, Mr. Mayor, I'd answer your questions, but he Thank you very much, Council. <laughs> We appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And, and that sounds like a road trip. I've always wanted to go to Rome. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just real briefly, he took about 45 of us from around the states. And it's such an inspiring town, the way they treat their kids in high school, their businesses. You can go in and get gas, and somebody who the gas clerk will tell you, this is the greatest town you'll ever visit. And it's like 90 miles from nowhere. It's in the ABC. Atlanta, Birmingham, right? It's amazing place. Keep in mind, we got Paris and London also here. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, MAU Chief Construction, I don't think Michael's here this evening. He gives an update on anything, although I'm not sure he's supposed to be. So, Michael John is that. Water Waste Park Commission, Mr. Rattery, don't see either. Either. There's Greg, no? No report? Okay. Okay, again, Council, if you have questions or comments regarding the 
whatever you want. Let us know and we'll get those to uh, uh, those folks that can answer your question for you. At this time, we have our citizen forum. The procedure has been uh, for many years, uh, but not everybody knows it as you come in, so I'll tell you real quick. We did have a sign-up sheet at the back of the room. Uh, if you came in tonight, and I do have three uh, folks that have signed up. If you did not get a chance, if you did not know to sign up and you want to speak tonight, you certainly can still do that. We would just ask that, uh, that after these three gentlemen get through speaking, uh, you raise your hand, we'll, we'll acknowledge you, and you come to the microphone, uh, state your name and your address for the record, and uh, you can certainly have an opportunity to do that. So I did want to make mention, too, as we were speaking, uh, for the record, that uh, Councilman Lanster is, is here tonight, so we have a full, full council. So, uh, first on our list this evening is Pastor Ronnie Hill. Sir, if you would, not that we don't know you, but if you state your name and address, please. My name is Ronnie Deal. I live at 1183 Highland Circle in Greenwood. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak to this issue of alcohol being sold in Greenwood. I can assure you, I'm not here to preach a sermon, so uh, just relax. I know Baptist preachers can be long-winded, but uh, tonight my words will be brief. But I do want to be clear, and I do want to speak with passion and conviction. My opposition of this is not so much from a religious viewpoint, but from my own personal experiences with people I've dealt with who have been impacted by alcohol. And that has led me to the position that I stand on tonight. I've seen the effects of people who struggle with alcohol addiction. I've heard them say many times, I wish I would have never taken that first drink. I've seen it tear marriages apart. I've dealt with kids that come from alcoholic homes and I've seen the struggles they have. And I've conducted funerals and grieved with parents who have lost a child because of a drunk driver. I've experienced the hurt that many people suffer because of alcohol. I know you might say, well, is alcohol the blame of all that? I do know that people have a choice and they're responsible for those choices. But I've seen the negative impact that alcohol, alcohol can have in people's lives. And I can help, if I can help keep alcohol from being sold in our community, then I must voice my opposition. I'm not on some crusade to keep people from drinking. If people want to drink, they can buy it. But Greenwood is a unique community that has earned a strong reputation for being a great place to raise a family. I meet and talk to a lot of people who have moved to Greenwood to raise their family here. All of them moved here with the awareness that this town doesn't sell alcohol. I pray it can stay that way. Here's the bottom line. I have two teenage daughters at home. My counsel to them as a dad is this. Because of all the hurtful things associated with alcohol, the best advice I can give you is to abstain. It's the wisest decision for an individual, and I believe it's the wisest decision for Greenwood. Let's keep alcohol from being sold in our community. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ronnie. Mr. Todd Hills. <laughs> My name is Todd Hales. I live 20810 Highway 7 North South in Greenwood. Unlike uh, Ronnie, I did come to preach a sermon, but a short one. I like to preach a sermon. I agree with everything he had to say. And I'm here to encourage you to keep out the whole house of Greenwood. We live in a community that, uh, by and large, values our Creator and His work. Prayer to start this evening indicates that. We bow our heads and we pray to our God thankful for that. It's a remarkable thing that we are able to do that in this community. We need to continue to do that. But because we are a people who praise to God, we're also a people who listens to His Word. And most believers know that the New Testament forbids drunkenness. Most of us can think of passages like 1 Corinthians chapter 6 where the Apostle Paul says drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's some pretty strong language. It's straight to the point. But beyond drunkenness, there are passages in the text that help us understand the dangers of alcohol. One of those passages that I want to mention to you is in Proverbs chapter 23. It comes from the wise man. Proverbs chapter 23. Beginning in verse 29, he asks a series of questions. Five questions. 
He asked questions like, who has, <coughs> who has sorrow? Who has bruises without cause? Who has bloodshot eyes? He asked those questions, and then he answers them. He says, those who linger long over wine, and those who go in search of mixed drinks. Mm -hmm. Now that's something we can relate to, because all of us have seen as Ronnie said, we have seen the effects of alcohol. We have seen families suffer with alcohol. We have counseled many times married couples who are having trouble because of alcohol, or at least it's a contributing factor in life. We've seen children who struggle with abuse or because parents are intoxicated. We know about that. We've seen that. And so the wise man is saying, who has those problems? Who is it that struggles with that? It's the folks who are trying to drink. And then he says in verse 32, he says, at the last, it is the alcohol. It stings like a light, and it bites like a sun. We know that. We're familiar with that. The nice thing about the text, though, is God always gives us a solution to a state problem. He always says, okay, here's what you do to avoid. And so the avoidance is in verse 31. And here's what he says in verse 31. He says, do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, and when it goes down smooth. That's a simple solution to a huge problem. Just don't look at it. If we don't look at it, we won't drink it. If we don't drink it, we will not get bitten by it. And that's the logic that the wise man, really God's wisdom, provides for us. For years, Greenwood has been a community that made it relatively easy compared to other communities to not look at it. It's been fairly easy to avoid it in Greenwood because it has been illegal to sell it. What we're asking is for that to continue. Let's make it easy for those who do not want the after effects to avoid movement. Ask you to do that based on your care and concern for the Thank you. Mr. Jim Newcomb.
you give a five percent tax, that's a hundred and fifty dollars per month in the car. Eighteen hundred dollars a year. If you have a two percent tax on it, that's sixty dollars a month. A big seven hundred and twenty dollars a year for the car. We had better things to do with our time. And better ways to make it better and money for making this town besides alcohol. These figures don't take into account first responders, fire department, police department. Those expenses when accidents happen, when DWIs or DUIs happen in this town. like to speak, we would certainly recognize you at this time. Uh, if you didn't uh, take the opportunity to sign up, we would like to do that. Yes, sir. Sorry, my first council meeting, so I'm not familiar with the sign up. So, okay. My name is Joey Rowland. My address is 506 East Pasadena Street here in Greenwood. I would also like to speak on the issue of alcohol in Greenwood. Um, 
I grew up in Greenwood, uh, graduated high school in Greenwood, never had alcohol here in Greenwood. Okay, went to uh, college in Fayetteville, and actually alcohol became a very big part of my life for 20 years. So I have the understanding of the effects of what alcohol can do to somebody and the, the bad decisions that people can make. But more importantly, not being able to control alcohol and let you do start drinking. And that's where my concern comes from. And that's where the concern for my daughter. I have a 12 year old daughter and a 15 year old daughter that I have concerns for them. Mainly because it's not that you can, you can limit alcohol in the restaurant, but you can't control what somebody does before they go to a restaurant. Believe me, I mean, <coughs> I've been the guy that had a 12-pack of beer at home, drove drunk to the restaurant, had more alcohol at the restaurant, and then drove home, and put everybody at danger. And I'm very lucky, and only by the grace of God am I going have to hurt somebody. Also been the person that my best friend and another friend were hit by drunk drivers in high school. So I experienced that. And believe me, to this day, I think back on that quite often. So that's where my concerns lie. Um, I lived in Northwest Arkansas when this same type of measure started. Started as a private club. You have to go sign in. Now, if you go look at Northwest Arkansas, Benton County is just like Washington County now. And there's no sign-in anymore. And you can go buy liquor and alcohol on every corner in every convenience store now. You know, it, it went restaurants, private clubs deal, and then it moved on just to restaurants, you know, but had alcohol. Now it's in convenience stores, and now it's basically everywhere you go up there. So that's where my concerns lie. Take it from somebody that's experienced it. I thank goodness I haven't had a drink in four or five years, and I'll continue to be sober in my life. And uh, that's where my concerns lie. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Anyone else want to speak? I would. Yes, sir. My name is John Bailey, and I'm not really longer a resident of Greenwood. Until five years ago, I was a lifelong resident, although most of that time I didn't live here. I was in the military, and uh, I'd like to kind of repeat on what some of Reverend Bill said. I think in my 22 years in the Army, through my youth losing 16 soldiers, alcohol and vehicles. And the funny thing is, 10 were stone cold soldiers. They were hit by drunk drivers. Um, I remember a post I was at, six births, soldiers committee, six births. Three of them were drunk. Alcohol can really create a lot of problems. Now, I know we have in Fort Smith, and uh, I know people drink at home, but not on the roads as much. I think when you're in the Army, alcohol fatalities build a big deal. Get close track. 47% of vehicular fatalities, all types, not just alcohol related, occur between 10 and 2, Friday nights, and Saturday nights. No alcohol related to most of us, as well as some of the other ones, the other 60 hours of the week. And Brother Neil reminded me of um, also, we used to have a triad. Drinking problem, job problem, marriage problem. And you had to fight the drinking problem by working on the other two. It impacted a lot of lives. I know we have alcohol here. I drink. I don't think I'm going to help as I drink, but I think if I get behind a vehicle and kill someone, I might. And, um, you just need to be careful what you bring in here and be aware that most of your problem, your biggest problem, they can happen all the time. The biggest problem, the job problems, that's is a 24-7 deal that can last for years. But fatalities can rarely happen on those Friday and Saturday nights. You need to take what you can do to kind of limit it. I'm an accountant like Jim Newton. I run some numbers as well. I think Fort Smith had a 4.5% tax. Conway's kind of a 5% on their alcohol sales. Uh, I went to we think we had a guy from TGF Fridays here last time, so I went to this place and actually had a drink. Only one, grown sick. Things were about six fifty. The beers were about four fifty. Let's say the average drink price would be five fifty. 
five or six sales tax to raise a million dollars to remedy this town, you'd have to sell 3.5 million alcoholic drinks. Mm -hmm. To raise $100,000 a year, you would need to sell 30,000 a month. Three drinks for every person in town. I don't think Dr. Burgess and me are going to be doing our part. Uh, so I think the revenue may be a little limited. If you do your cost, you know, benefit analysis, I think you're going to find that your, your costs and your detriments may exceed your benefits. I've talked to several people about this, and a lot of people are against it far. I know you only heard against it tonight, and I'm one of those. But increasingly, from people that are far here, we're not having children. And a lot of people talk about how, you know, about the intersection out there. I'm on the water commission, and I'll tell you right now, we're not going to have water sewer out there for at least two more years, at least. I mean, maybe longer than that. Plenty of time to put this on the 2018 ballot on the people's side. I think that'd be your smart move. Y'all don't get blamed. Because if one of the drunk drivers kills my son, my wife's going to come here and kick y'all up. <laughs> okay, I just I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. I thank you, yes, sir. I, I just want to. My name is Wade Down. I live at 2734 on Business Road. And for the last three years, my wife and I have been involved in a ministry called Sober Recovery, either in Greenwood or in Fort Smith. And in that three years, I've heard over 100 and maybe up to 150 different testimonies from people. And these testimonies are not. They're not highlights of people's lives. They're the low, the lowest of the lowest parts of their lives. And I, 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 I can't tell you what percentage of those were alcohol, started with alcohol, but a huge percentage of them started with alcohol. Started with beer, then it went to harder liquor, then it went to drugs, and then it turned into murder for a woman. Um, the number of people that I've heard with these testimonies that it started with liquor, not necessarily with them, but another family member that they lived with, or maybe they were a child, and it happened 20 years ago, and they've been living with this for the last 30 years, and the way they retreated, left them home alone, or even worse. Some it's so bad. And, and, they, and this is all confidential, so it's, it's all news, but the stories I've heard are horrendous. And yes, I know Greenwood people go to Fort Smith to bring beer liquor to Greenwood. But the way I see it, the further we need to get away, the better off we are. The closer it is, the closer it is. The more accessible it is, the more accessible it will be. Um, and, you know, I look back at Greenwood and I, I just think of the success we've had. You know, great school systems, great city to live. I mean, everything, everything we see on Facebook is Greenwood was the second best city for safety. Greenwood was, was this or that. And it's alcohol and health flatteries up there. Or could it hurt? And I, I just, I just, I just ask, I'm just going to ask you to vote for this. I'm just going to straight forward ask you to vote for this. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. I think we have a lady just now. I'll get you.
vote yes to let alcohol or you consider to let alcohol in your town and still be able to put that out there to remind our kids not to drink and drive. The next thing I would like to say is that when you vote, when you get ready to vote on this, think about your family. Don't think about yourself. Think about your family. How would you feel if it were your family, your child, your wife, your mother, your father that was involved in one of these accidents? So that's where we put ourselves aside and think about it. And that's what I would ask you to do. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Sheldon, my name is Al. Uh, I'm sorry if I've offended anybody. That, that was not my intention of opening up a business for Greenwood, Arkansas. Uh, or open up a business at all. Um, most of y'all don't know me person to person. Some of y'all don't do. Um, I respect John Bailey's opinion a lot. A whole lot. I want everybody in this room to know that. Um, I had plenty of uh, background conversations at, at Farmers Bank and I respect me. Um, I'm also a numbers guy, so I'm going to give you some numbers, okay? Um, spot you probably your opinion of me. Uh, I have pretty strong uh, Judeo Christian values, and you probably think opposite of that, but this may be a portion of you. Uh, I don't drink at all, folks. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you my numbers first, and I'll give you a little more. Who are you? Do what? Who are you? Oh, Josh, Josh Niles, heard everybody do that by now. I'm sorry. What's your address? 313 Warrior Road, Green Park. Well, it's a little big in my house tonight. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the population of Crawford County is 61,703 statistically since 2015. Okay. The population of Sebastian County is 127,780 2015. I'm sure these numbers have shifted a little bit because everybody wants to move to Greenwood and that can't blame. So, if it's 127,708 people in Sebastian County, that means in Fort Smith, we roughly have a number of 88,133, okay? So, roughly there's about 50,000 more people in Sebastian County outside Fort Smith. That means we're 10,000 short of the whole Crawford County, okay? Bear with me, I'm flipping here. In 2014, University of Arkansas study found alcohol sales would have brought an estimated income of $5.8 million in the county of Crawford County. Researchers from the university used data from 2000, 2000, 2014 and 2015 to come up with the amount of estimated Crawford County residents who spent an average of $194 per person on beer and $162 per person on liquor and wine. And folks realize that's not everybody because not everybody drinks beer, not everybody drinks liquor. I'm not in, that, I'm not in those numbers in Sebastian County because I don't drink. According to the study in 2015, there would have been 15.5 million combined beer, liquor, and wine sales in Crawford County, which have generated an additional 2.4% in sales tax revenue, bringing $558,496 in county and city sales tax. Now that being said, not everybody's coming to Greenwood to buy beer. I get that, okay? Sebastian County is just right below Rye Hill, so probably odds are they're going to Fort Smith before they come to Greenwood, okay? So those numbers are priced skewed by about 18 percent. Um, additionally, the study estimated that lifting the alcohol ban would create an additional 76 local jobs with a labor income of 2.3 million. Kevin Holmes is a spokesperson for the group keeps dollars in Crawford County, which is trying to get the issue of the next ballot, something that hasn't happened in more than 70 years. Crawford County has been so behind for so long, and this is just kind of one of the uh, last hurdles that we think is hurtling bank, uh, back local city and, uh, and county government, chamber of commerce,
from getting some big businesses here. Home said big business like liquor stores that according, and please understand I don't know what store here. Uh, big business like liquor stores that according to the state could generate nearly $6 million every year, which Home said would help in improvements. It allows the counties, uh, you know, to get revenue to improve the roads, improve the rural fire, improve the police department, Home said. Crawford County Judge John Hall said an official economic study has never been done before. I've seen people come up with estimates because they just guess it, make someone kind of, some kind of number, but as far as an actual study, I've never seen it, Hall said. Judge Hall said at this point he's not sure which side of the study will benefit. I'm sure the dry side will say it's not worth it, Hall said. If it's a real, real high number, I'm sure the wet side will say, look, what we can do with the tax money. But Holmes said the study shows that the county is missing out. Look, we're missing out on by not having Crawford County having liquor sales. Now, there's your statistic numbers, okay? Legit ones, done by the U of A, not some guesstimation, okay? The next thing I want to say is we're all talking about accidents, liquor accidents. I get it, okay? I wouldn't want anybody having a DUI accident. I don't care if it's my mother, my brother, your sister, your cousin. That's horrific, okay? There's no excuse for it, okay? But statistically, and I'm going to put myself on the podium here, more people die from obesity than they do from DUI accidents. Okay? More people, people die from heart attacks than they do from DUI accidents. Okay? You are more, this is statistically proven, and you're more likely to do your own research. Okay? You are more apt to get in an accident driving further and further and further if you're drinking and driving. Okay? So, if I'm not able to go buy a local beer, at a local sports group, and I, I, I encourage, even if you don't want to buy anything there, I encourage you to walk into that place. Folks, it's family friendly. I had six families in the night with two kids and mom and dad. It's family friendly, okay? I've had multiple Facebook reviews over the past weekend. It's family friendly. There's not a bar in there. There never will be a bar in there. I don't want that. I don't, I don't want that for our, for our city. But I understand that beer sales, liquor sales, and all that kind of stuff do bring taxes in, okay? So, all these things kill people, okay, including DUI accidents, okay, including all that stuff. But if statistically, the further somebody drives, they're going to get in an accident, okay. So, bam, for first, the closest place they're going to go to watch a ball game is Beef O'Brady's, okay. I like going to Beef O'Brady's. they got some good food, okay, they got plenty of TVs. Why not? But if that's the closest place they drive is Beef O'Brady's to have three beers or whatever they're doing, okay, and so, bam, we get in our car. We don't drink it too much. We got to drive all the way to Greenwood. So the further we drive, what's going to happen? I'm going to get more impaired, more impaired, more impaired, more impaired the further I drive. So by the time I hit Center Street, what's going to happen? I'm more impaired, I'm more impaired, I'm more impaired. So I won't have to get in an accident. Okay? If somebody is goofy enough to drink five beers at their house, which they are, okay, and then comes up to game base sports drill and does have two two beers, and so to the point that. They shouldn't be driving, okay? My, my staff can be trained to the point of recognizing this, but if they didn't recognize this, and it did happen, okay, statistically, okay, this is stuff that universities do for a living, okay? They're safer driving than they're to their house from my location than for beef O'Brady's, okay? So statistically, if you're wanting to keep your town safe from drunk drivers, then you would want it here. Because if you don't want to keep your staff from just safe from drunk drivers, then you wouldn't want to do it. You wanted people to go to beef or breaks. Hands down, that's the proven facts. Okay? So there's your numbers. Okay? Now, I'm going to get on the whole Christian value of it. Okay? Mr. Knobs? Yes. Sorry to interrupt you, but I do need to hold you to probably one more minute. But I didn't actually announce we usually hold them about three That's all right. 60 seconds I can handle okay. it. From a Christian value, your, your, the, your, your point of going out is to what? Reap the harvest. Am I not correct? Yes or no? Your hands? Yep. Okay. So your point is to reap the harvest. So let's hypothetically say the table over here at Game Day Sports Girls Group of Heathens that went out to about 3 o'clock in the morning. They got drunk. And they all said it's 1230 on Sunday morning. Okay. They're still a little hungover, but they're safe to drive. Bam, this table over here is a group of Christians that just had an awesome service at whatever church you want to go to, talking about the Spirit of God, the love of God, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So bam, out of the group of heathens, one person heard the Christians speak about church, spoke about God, spoke about the love of God. Maybe they never heard before. Okay, so at that point in time, you as the Christian, 
planted a seed. And then what happens when you plant a seed and you begin to water the seed? The seed begins to rise up, right? Okay, at that point in time, boom, if I planted a seed and it begins to water, it begins to rise up, I then planted a seed, I then, then you have one church member. So if your job is to reap the harvest, and you did that by going in there and having a burger and having a drink, then boom, you just did your job as a Christian. Absolutely the facts. Have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Knott. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am.
I want you to know that this would be strictly limited to our members and that we, we would not be selling alcohol to the general public, that you could just drive up and get a six pack or a 12 pack or like you would at a convenience store in Fort Smith. It would not be that way. Alcohol at the golf course would be limited strictly to the membership. And uh, according to what myself and the board have put together, we would limit sales to that of a six pack if you're playing golf today. And I just would want everybody to know that it, uh, it's, it's not going to be a free for all. By having this ordinance, I would actually have some rules in place and uh, people on the payroll that understand when someone's had too much and understand, uh, you know, when to cut somebody off. But uh, again, I'm, I'm just here for my first reading, and so I may be premature. But I did want to get uh, get it addressed before you that, that I'm talking about for the golf pool and not a personal business that I'm putting in myself. I see it as a way for us to gauge better what's uh, being consumed presently at the golf course uh, in the way of alcoholic beverages. So by having this in place, we're actually better able to police uh, what's being consumed out there than what we are presently. Because I've been in touch with the ABC board and they told me how to post it out there to our premises and what the requirements would be. Uh, I also have to attend a mandatory class in Little Rock that's going to teach me all the regulations and do's and don'ts. And just so that you know, I plan to be a very, very much a stickler on that because it's my name on the line. But thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Sir. I'm Jared Ricketts. I live at 3605 Colfax Way. Um, now, any death coming from a DWI, DUI is rigged. It is. Uh, I spent 11 years as a military police officer. Um, I was in overseas in Germany where the Germans love their alcohol. They love their alcohol, they love their drive, they love their car, their roads. Um, some of the most horrific accidents I've been to were because of alcohol. However, the most horrific accident I've ever been to was not alcohol related at all. You know, sleep deprived, high speeds, you know, stuff happens. I don't want anybody to, you know, a lot of y'all may not know me or you may know me. My stance on alcohol, I drank alcohol quite a bit when I was younger. 19 years old, going to Germany, go down to the bars, I could drink legally, have a good time. Um, I've since slowed down quite a bit. I had a surgery where it, it was kind of hard for me to drink alcohol, so I slowed down. Uh, did I still drink? Yeah. I'm not a beer drinker at all. I think it tastes like crap. I'll drink some spirits though. I like some whiskey, some good rum. I drink alcohol from around the world. Now, do I get drunk? No. I sit there, I like to have a good drink every once in a while while I'm having a meal. We're barbecuing with my buddies, whatever the case it is. Um, I want to address the buffalo in the room, the elf in the room, if you will, of someone or some people I hear comments behind me. We're here to discuss this. If it's negative, you can teach the elf. Somebody wants to address something, that's fine. Uh, like I said, deaths from alcohol is, is horrific. It's important. It is. But keeping it out of the city, like Mr. Niles has said, is still here. I can't tell you how many times an officer is pulling over people at night from now to 6 o'clock in the morning, even during the afternoon, when people are getting pulled over for drinking and driving. They want to force to drink drive. It happens. Murder is illegal, <coughs> drinking and driving is illegal, drugs are illegal, people still do it. People are going to find a way. Stuff's still going to happen. We had a prohibition years ago. I wouldn't have known about it. I was still in the twinkle of my parents' eyes. But it happened. People still did it. People find a way. I, I personally think in having alcohol sales, you know, I don't know what's the, you know, the numbers on how much tax is going to bring in or leave it on. Um, it doesn't really bother me to look as much into it. But I think if I want to go to, you know, have a meal or drink beer, I should be able to. Um, 
you know, if I want to play golf, then I do not play golf. I'll wrap, I'll, I'll wrap golf clubs around the trees more than anything else. But if I'm out there all day, I'm going to have a cold drink, I'll have a cold drink. I think it should be able to. Um, there were times I would drive to Fort Smith to go eat my favorite whiskey and drive back, and I sit at home and have some drinks. Have a good time with family, barbecue, go on from there. But I hate driving to Fort Smith, especially that old pickup up drive. I hate it. You know, I'm afraid it's going to break down on 71. I'm going to call the wife and give me and she's mad at me. I'm not going to have my alcohol. So I got a piece of truck. Uh, so I want you all to just take that into consideration. Things are illegal already, but people still break the law no matter what. DWIs are happening every night in this county. I guarantee it. There are DUIs happening in the city all the time. We know that for a fact. It happens. But like I said, I'm going to address um, Mr. Brown, you and your wife. I'm sorry. I really am. I can't imagine what it is. It feels like to lose a child. I've made many notifications in my career um, to spouses and uh, loved ones of deceased military members because of alcohol-related incidents. I've also done the best drugs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Anyone else here to speak? Yes, sir. I'm um, Cliff Piercy, uh, 2700 in Water Drive, uh, Shadow Lot. I know, uh, not even legal to speak. Uh, <laughs> not going to talk about other things that I've heard tonight that I might disagree with a little bit, but I did agree with 90% of it. And I know each and every one of you, Lance, Kim, Daniel, Rod, Lee, AC, and the majority of y'all grew up here in Greenwood, and you stayed here in Greenwood, and you stayed here for a reason. In a world where people don't stand for a whole lot anymore, Greenwood still stands for something. And that's one thing that makes Greenwood special. That's one reason you're still here. That's one reason I'm still here. And that's one reason a whole lot of people want to come here. I plead with you. Don't take it. Keep Greenwood special. I can't talk about the stats and how financially one man might benefit from it or how the country club, I'm sure you can benefit from it as well. I can't speak about that. I think we can do fine without it. I think we can find other ways to make money. Greenwood is a special place. You wouldn't leave the pretty thing with it. Y'all have the opportunity to keep it a special place. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Thank you, Mr. Pearson. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Thank you. We will uh, move into our next item, which is the agenda additions. Uh, we have, and I, I will make a comment too, real quick, and I'll we'll let the council consider this while we're doing our agenda additions. It is the council's pleasure, obviously, this is their meeting uh, to move anything that is alcohol related on the agenda. You know, there's, there's two items. One is not far away. It's number two on the business. Uh, the other one is now number five uh, on new business. The council will allow, with the turnout that we have tonight, to move those up. Maybe immediately following the agenda additions, if that's okay to you. I'd like to move those to the top of the agenda. Okay. 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 Motion second. <laughs> okay. We'll, we will do that. So. You folks will know that we will discuss and, and, and talk about this momentarily. Uh, agenda additions tonight, I know uh, we found out at our meeting this morning, uh, department head meeting, we have two that I'm aware of. One is, uh, actually we need to do a couple of things if, if the council is okay with this. I'd like to move switch number nine with number 12, just to get the street department kind of in and out, like we're doing finance, if that's okay. That makes sense. And then also we need to add number 13. I have it down as a as finance. It's a resolution uh, pertaining to the uh, police department. 
with you form of cost. And then we need to add, according to our, our oh, I'm sorry, we have, we have any,
there's, there's a lot of passion. This is the second time this has come out, and there's a lot of passion. There's actually, I think, less people here than there were the first time when me and you sat on the council. And I'm afraid as time goes along, there will be less and less people. There will be a point where planning should be in place. Uh, I'm, uh, so it seems like at this point it would be a moot point, but I think <coughs> it may be that we should go ahead and consider putting planning in place. Uh, I've got a combination of what I said I would bring forward last time when me and Mr. Niles were in such a heated argument uh, about my planning. Uh, and I think this is the best time. When everything is off the table, now is the time to plan and reasonable heads will prevail. Uh, my, what I brought forward, uh, it may seem somewhat discouraging from these things from happening, but uh, it's uh, what I'm proposing and uh, I've done what I said I'd do. I've uh, put in there the current state maximum for taxation, uh, somewhat uh, heavy fees, and I've directed those fees away from the uh, prerogative of the city council. And so it would go straight to the park and recognition. So if y'all would like, we can start at the top. I've, I've talked to, uh, well, I've, I've visited with four, four different attorneys on this. Uh, on the opening, it says, an ordinance establishing a permitting process and a privilege permit for selling and dispensing any controlled beverage within the city of Greenwood by business <coughs> by the state of, to sell alcohol beverages, levying permit fees and city supplemental tax of 10% on beer and 14% on wine and mixed drinks. Uh, upon the annual gross receipts, which are derived therefrom, repealing an ordinance and complex, statute of penalties and violations of these provisions and for other purposes. Uh, this is a copy from Conway's. Conway's in a similar situation we are. Or I can't agree with that. Conway's was at 5%, which John Bailey had mentioned. And I called Don Zimmerman with, with the Municipal League, and I asked him, I said, this is what I wanted to do. I said, this is something I'm not necessarily for. I voted against it, but it did pass, and I kind of took it upon myself to start some planning. Because if it's going to pass, I want to have a plan. Uh, now, obviously, it hadn't passed this time, but it passed the first time. So uh, he he went through state law with me, and he determined that the state max on beer would be 10%, and the state max on mixed drinks would be 14%. So in that opening, it's exactly the way Conway wrote it, except I put the state max on beer and the state max on wine. Uh, also, throughout this, I visited Jason Carter, which y'all know he's... Uh, city attorney of North Little Rock. And he was, uh, uh, you know, we grew up together. And then I also visited Michael Harry at ABC. And uh, he's the attorney for ABC, right? Sure. And then I visited with Officer with Mike. Now, in going through all this, I think at the very end, Mike needs to look over because I visited with these people on the phone and they've not seen a document put together. So if you go down through it, did y'all want to go through it line by line? I, I will say that I visited with David Shaw at the municipal league went line by line with him and he had no issue with the council. If you go on down, um, I'll tell you what I've changed from what the city of Conway had. Uh, it goes on, you're talking about permit, you're giving definitions. Um, there's a definition of supplemental privilege permit and the sub supplemental privilege permit fee. Now, I've adjusted that. If you go down on page two, the supplemental privilege permit fee. This is written, up to this point, it's written exactly the way Conway had. A uh, fee established by the city of Greenwood for the privilege of operating a private club within the city. There is hereby levied levy an annual supplemental privilege permit fee in the amount of $1,500 or $50 for a nonprofit 501c3. Conway's was $50. Um, I've obviously raised it $1,450. I think by doing that, and this is, a, this is a renewable in addition to your privilege license. So when a business comes into Greenwood, you have to buy a privilege license and be able to operate. So a private, a uh, private club 
I would now have to buy a supplemental critical license of $1,500. Unless you're a 501c3. I tell you, I, don't, I didn't really have, just that was added. It was not in Conway's. The uh, only thing I thought of is maybe a 501c3 being maybe the Elks Foundation or maybe the Bell Park Foundation that wanted to have something where they were trying to do a fundraiser. I don't know, and I could strike that. Um, then we'll go into section three. You don't think I was too out of line with the $1,500 because I was really going with $2,000. So if you don't think I was low, I agree with you. Well, I think that if, uh, if you're, uh, to me, I'd say if you're going to put in there, you're going to sell alcohol, it should be a matter if it's profit or non-profit. It should be the same thing. So you think I'll scratch the 501c3? Are you okay with the $1,500 permit fee? Yes. Do all, do, does everybody kind of agree with they see that the 501c3 yeah. should be striped? I don't know what that means. All right. I'm a 401k. That's all I Now, $1,500 would be renewable every year, so you can see just by having a pretty steep privilege permit fee that's renewable every year, you've kind of gotten rid of your dives and just your small joints, I guess. Uh, so if we go down to section three, I'm going to scratch the $50 for the 501c3 on that. Uh, permits required, that's exactly the way Conway had theirs, the application process for a permit. So it goes down and talks about when you can apply for it, it has to be bought at the first of the year. If you'll go over to page three, <coughs> on G, the city of Conway referred to Arkansas State, Arkansas Code, what is ACA? Arkansas Okay, so they returned to 3-9-223, which is what gives cities off the rights to do what we're doing. It said that uh, all money could be used for general purposes. Well, I've amended it, and uh, I've taken out that all cities can be used for general purposes purposes and if you'll see at the last sentence, all revenues collected will be budgeted and appropriated for activities that benefit youth and youth park or parks related purposes by the Greenwood Park and Recreation Commission. Uh, that was added, obviously. Let's talk about that. Okay. I don't have any problem with that. If that's what we all want to do. But just like this ordinance, I mean to Miss Brown's point, we need to be prepared. We need to have a plan. And it needs to outlast all of us. And to that point, to outlast all of us, I think the council controls the money. And the money ought to go into the general fund for their use. I mean, it, it, if we wanted to somehow label that it goes towards youth and youth activities or, you know, whatever. But I think the council should control the fund. Think of down the road. I mean, this may, this this ordinance may never come into play for the next five years. Sure. And you know, none of us may be sitting here when it happens. So, you know, as state law exists today, the council controls the money. So I think we should write the ordinance in a way that says you know, the council controls the money. These people have to elect people that spend their money wisely. So. And ultimately, we still approve the part of our commission's budget. Yeah. So I think it would be appropriate that I don't see just talent it all up for this I mean, that's We've got too many entities in the city that are suffering from shortfall anyway. If, if some of that money needs to be used for that, that's what should be done. I mean, not just, I just don't, I'm a Daniel. I, I think that money ought to be controlled by the group that sets up here and they dictate where it goes. Well, just I mean, 20 years from now, you may be generating $20 million in revenue that you don't want to you know, you want yeah, spread that money out. Yeah, I do want to call one of you. Well, you may ain't going to be here, though. So if we just left it all fees, tax, and penalties and stopped after pursuing the ACA and just left that last sentence out, 
Uh, for general for purposes. For general purposes. Yes. And then the money goes. You know, I'm, you brought up that it all towards parks and, and what have you, that uh, I don't think it hurts anything to leave it. I don't know. I hate to see us paint ourselves in the corner. There's been times when we've had money that was left with one way or another, and it's been difficult for us because we want what it needed to spend it other places. It's not that you paint yourself in a corner permanently, it just going to take three months to change it. Right. So it wouldn't be a knee jerk reaction where we go, hey, we're going to go rob that money coming in from alcohol sales to buy a new police car. It's going to be a tough decision. And you're going to raise some eyebrows when you go back and spend three months. You're okay leaving. Well, I am okay. I'll leave. Yeah. Hey, well, I, I think this is. I think this is a long ways down the road. We're talking about putting this on for first reading by high school. Yeah. Which gives us. I say this is the first time they've seen it. Which gives us three months to sort through. Yeah, yeah. three more months to look at. It. Yeah, traditionally, to make that I mean, I think traditionally as a council, one of the things we've done well has been thoughtful and we plan. And I think that's part of why this issue didn't pass tonight is because we're all going to put our best foot forward. We've got a good council. There's time for us to work through this. Uh, I don't know if we have to flesh out the entire debate tonight in the meeting that's already mm -hmm. pretty long. I, I, I say I, I'm, I'm going to vote for this one. It's not going to take three months to strike it out. It's not going to take three months to strike that out. No. 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 We don't like that tonight. We work on that with some back later. I think Mr. This big book here, 39223. Uh, item two says all fees and taxes levied here under by the city or county shall be used for city or county general purposes or for city or county economic development purposes. Y'all want to read like uh, that? Uh, you uh, is uh, it, parks is a city purpose. And this was a Zimmerman question that the director missed looking this way. I asked him a point, and I go ahead and put this directly in the ordinance where this money has to go to parks. And he said yes. If you want to put it in the ordinance and then well are you gonna you know are you then going to go to parks and somehow regulate that the parks uses it for you you know what i mean yeah well, i understand i'm doing it because i'm calling it out that it has to be used for youth activities well i i can count the votes and it looks like i'm out all right. Be clear, we're just putting it on for the first reading by Yeah, I mean, we don't. That's time to sort through it. Yeah. So if I left it in, no, if I get it off the first reading, I'll tell you, I'm not going to vote for that. All right, I'm going to scratch it. What other, what other time bombs you got? I've got a few. <laughs> hey, Rod, right, can I go back to the. No, I just took my thing? biggest one, though. <laughs> in your title, <laughs> Uh, the very top it talks about annual, annual gross receipts. Yep. Um, talking about the very top? The, yeah. The top. Okay. That this percentage will be derived therefrom or to, uh, excuse me, on the annual gross receipts. <laughs> derived therefrom. <clears throat> Next to last page talks about uh, the same. In, yes, A4. Drink uh, based upon annual gross receipts. That then item C says that we're going to uh, collect that monthly. Where are you at? 18, 4, 18. Section 18, 4, 7. I think your title needs to say that the, the percent tax would be levied on a monthly basis. You're based upon monthly receipts. So I need to amend the title. It reads as if we're going to tax your annual approach. They don't match it. One's, one's growth annual, the other month. Well, we need to keep it monthly because we're picking it up. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So in, the 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 annual in the title and in 184. Mr. We're changing in the title of the month because that's how we're going. Yeah. Paint the same time paint the whole state, state and city sales tax companies. All right, so we're going to fix the title. This is what I got so far. We're scratching out the fifty dollars for the five hundred one c three. We're scratching out youth administered by Greenwood Park Merit Commission. 
All right. Did, do you want it changed to what F2, what you read? Well, uh, okay. I just leave it for Sarah T, right? right. You, out you just scratched that last sentence. Yeah. Yeah. All revenues collected will be budgeted and appropriated for activities that benefit you and you parks related purposes by the Greenwood Parks Commission. It's going to be scratched out of section 18 and number C, too, right? <laughs> Or you just, it has the same language, Parks Commission as part of 18C. 18C says the same thing as it refers to the Parks Commission. Okay, so that, yes, we'll take out that line. So if we go to 18, 18C, you go to 18C. All. All four mentioned revenue collected will be budgeted and appropriated for activities that benefit youth and youth parks related purposes by the Greenwood Parks Commission. We'll scratch that. We're we'll scratching $50. We're scratching the $50 on three. Where's the privilege permit? Well, it wasn't. It was going to the parks. Well, the parks is the only thing that's going to be All fees, taxes, and penalties received by the city That's pursuant to this chapter will be used for general purposes within the city of Greenwood pursuant to ACA 3-9-223F. So G covers that. All right. So you want to go back to you want to go back to where I've added other things? Sure. It's somewhere around section five. Can we can we may I can we just start at the beginning and go through? We're already, we bounced. Right. Right. No, you bounced back several times. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So, we're on section five. Yeah, we're on section five. Well, you skip it over a few things. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. You want to just skip that? No, no. I want you to. We're not, no, we're not done. Okay. So, so, I want you to start at the beginning. So, section uh, for item H. We're, we're back. We're at item H. Uh, that is. City of Conway's language permits, permits shall be <coughs> transferred or signed unless until approved is granted out on the That's pretty standard. I, I don't, may not like. No permit will be issued for an establishment that is less than 2,000 feet of a school, church, daycare, youth activities organization, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous meeting place, Alcoholic Narcotic Dependency Center without prior approval from the City Council. Approval may be revoked for any cause at any time. So 2,000 feet, one mile is 5,280 feet. So you're talking about about a third of a mile. Uh, I like the 2,000 feet. Uh, you can, with the Council vote, you know, give someone permission. To be somewhere else within that? Is there, I missed out last week, everybody knows what you had to work, but we talked at some point, there's been talk about pitching some of this in, back to zoning, try to look at where you can zone things, have alcohol, where you can zone things to be like for a club. We certainly work on that. I mean, okay. if we, is this, we want to wait and see where the, because uh, let me, that's a zoning issue. Well, let me address that. So, City Attorney of Little Rock, Jason Carter, I was with him, he recommended that we did not. He said, you kind of lock yourself in on zoning. Zoning takes a long time to change. He said, you may, at some point, there may be an idea that you want to have flexibility on this, just the City Council. The City Council is going to be the organization that allows it to go forward with ABC. So the City Council should be in the driver's seat and say, you know what? Even though uh, this was not, you know, it's not currently in what your plan for the permit if they go forward, uh, I'm not opposed. You know, I originally wanted to get to zone. I wanted to have it all zone. I kind of agree with Jason uh, what he mentioned about zoning being difficult to change, difficult to institute. Uh, he said just write it in, and that's what has been done there with I. Door to door, at the crow flies around the horn, street feet, linear foot, the road. And there's a million variables to that 2,000. As crow flies, just 
2008. And basically, someone would ask basically us for a variance if they were inside that 2,000 feet. So you're at 1,800 feet, and the council says, yeah, that's a pretty good place. We'll allow that. Take a vote, and then the voters report in the minutes of the meeting, and then Charlotte writes the permit, and she refers to the vote, and they go forward. Oh, 2,000 what they have, right? Did you say in Conway? No. I'm adding to that. What you doing with 2,000? I just like 2,000. <laughs> he didn't use 2,000. I don't know that. 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 And that's our rule. We're not going to put it in these places. Well, you can't. That supersedes zoning. Like, you can't put it in a non commercial area. It's going right, to have to be. Right. But you can still zone. Zone. There's no place currently in the city limits of Greenwood that's not 2,000 foot from one of those things that listed. Mm -hmm. um, so we would pretty much take permission of the council every time. The the council, unless we annex out to us. Yeah, the council would pretty much have to weigh in on every single one. Which is what we have to do. Which anyway. you have to weigh in on it. But this is a guideline. When somebody comes in and said, because like Jason said, you're going to have somebody in here every month. Mm -hmm. And he said, all of, the, all of the first meeting may be very passionate. And you look, we bored them to death and they start walking out. He said, the first meeting may be passionate. He said, the second meeting may be less. And then the third meeting. And now you've got everybody coming in wanting to open one up running out of their Zookie's trail. And he said, you know, you need to be able to hand them a, you need to be able to hand them something and they, this is the guideline. Right. And they go, man, I'm not paying $1,500 a year for this and I'm not collecting all these taxes and I'm not 2,000, more than 2,000 feet from a church, a daycare, a school, youth activities organization. I'm not 2,000 feet. Forget it. And they walk on. And then there's one of these people that say, yeah, I'm going I'm to invest a lot of money here and it makes a lot of sense and I'm going to go get a shot. So. What is it at Conway? I don't have it. I don't have it. No. Yeah. I've added it out. I would like to add Jay. Yeah. Jay was also a recommendation from uh, the city attorney, North Little Rock. Everybody needs to submit a business plan, and that business plan needs to be kept with the permit. And then when they step out of line and they vary from their business plan, which you read and you accepted, uh, you just do not renew their permit the following year or you revoke it. So that goes back to my argument at the last meeting. Are, what are we? Are we a, are we tassels or no tassels? You know, well, I mean, I should have been here if there were tassels. You know, we're no tassels. And, and if that comes up with a business plan, and then you go down there and there's tassels, you say, buddy, we're, we're going to have to, the next meeting, I'm putting it on the agenda, and we're revoking your permit. You lost your $1,500, and you'll never get one again. We already have ordinances for tassels. Still, I, th I believe a business plan must be presented and accepted. So, I would like to add Jay. Do you all have a problem with me adding Jay? No. Okay, let's go on to section five. And, and y'all, uh, my eye stands is presented, right? My 2,000 feet. As long as we can grant a variance, yeah, I'll do it. You look at the last sentence, without, with, you know, you know, with prior approval from the city council. And approval may be revoked for any cause at any time. Did they right. say what was at Little Rock? The Sherman's not thought of like 500 feet. Little Rock's all the way. It doesn't matter. But even if we're here, you can't sell it. You can't buy it. You can't buy beer at the zero of the one of the Walmarts. The other one you can't, right? Because it's too far from the school. So how, how far does Sports Fit have in there? Well, uh, like Michael Harry, another lawyer I talked to, you know, it's all different. So, uh, on a private clubs, he said there is no distance requirement. That's totally up to the municipality. He said that's why we have to approve it first. He said we're looking for direction from the municipality. The liquor stores and several stores. That's governed by the state. That's governed by the state. He said the uh, marijuana dispensaries, they've got distances on them, they've got distances of other things. But on this, what we're looking at, he said there are no distances between for. Uh, uh, anything. It's, he said, you know, no distance from a church. He said it could share space with the church. So what we're saying as a municipality, 
us, we're not one of those. 2,000 feet, unless we give the prior approval. Hey, Ron. Upon further review, I wouldn't mind striking the very last part of I where approval may be revoked for any cause at any time. One, I don't feel like going to court a whole lot trying to pull that off. And two, I think the state regulates. If there's something that we think is grotesque enough to revoke a license for a private club, I believe the state will already pull the trigger on that. <coughs> Can I say something? It right. sounds to me like... Those are the council make, make sure you guys are okay. Yes. Can I say something? sounds to me like what, what the council is entering in here is planning, zoning, and uh, experiences. And to me, that's kind of a planning board adjustment uh, type of function. Would you like not zoning? Well, we, can, we can make a statement that says we don't want it within 2,000 feet of said areas, and that should supersede zoning. Yeah, right. Well, you could have, you, know, you, know, you, you, could, you could, if you still zone it and say, well, it can't be put here in this commercial zone, regardless of where you put it. My suggestion is for y'all to draw this up, <coughs> present it to the planning, and then bring it back to, to the council for approval. You know, that way we'll have, uh, the Board of Adjustments will have guidelines that says if, if it meets these <coughs> guidelines, then, you know, the zoning is correct. But if it doesn't, then, you know, we would have to get a variance and then you would have to approve the variance. <coughs> Except for the steel barn in Forest Hill subdivision, do y'all ever get crowds like this in the planning committee? Okay, what? Except for a steel barn in Forest Hills, <laughs> y'all ever get crowds like this in the planning commission yeah. meeting? Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. full well, house bedroom. Well, try to put a duplex on uh, Webster. Let's do this. Um, the reason I say that is because this is a solely a council function of granting or disallowing <coughs> private club licenses to go on in the city. So it's 100% our job to make up the rules on what we think the taxes should go to, how they should be levied, yeah. where they should be. Exactly. So, and I appreciate the fact that the board of adjustments and the commission or whatever you mentioned <coughs> has some input will probably be pretty good. <coughs> But a lot of stuff comes out of there that we don't know anything about. And they found out there's a building going up. And we're not coming. Well, they approved it the planning commission meeting. Well, and the thing that the planning commission board of uh, adjustments have to take in consideration when we come up with something that is a, uh, that we have these large flat crowds, that they have to look at the fact that we've got 20 people here as a large crowd, but we're making a decision that affects 9,500 people. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way I, I try to get my planning vision board of adjustments. Don't, don't just make your decision based on the fact that somebody shows up with pitchforks and, and forks. Mm -hmm. You've got to think about the future of, of Greenwood and planning. And does it meet uh, the, the ordinances in, in place right now? And, you know, just like you keep talking about the, the building out there for it to get past everything in our ordinance and then some. Not the U-Haul, man. How about the guy over the other building? Oh, yeah, the, the one that wants to cover his RV. Yeah, and, and see, that did not right. uh, meet our uh, ordinances. He asked for a variance. We turned him down, and, you know, the, the crowd that was here had a legitimate excuse. Mm -hmm. uh, reason plus they have covenants that also back them up we can we can uh, we can approve things with our ordinances but their covenants would supersede it if they wanted to buy it right. and so that was kind of the on that but like i said it, it just sounds like you know what we're doing here y'all are talking about planning you're talking about zoning you're talking about uh, variances say uh I what I'd like to do is continue on and see what the guys no, feel like. I'd like, to, I'd like to put it on the first reading, but then whatever passes, I would like for you to take it and put it on the Planning Commission's agenda and particularly look at Section 4, Item I. Really? It's just, give us, it's just, just that one item I was talking about. And then we want to know what y'all think of Section 4, Item I and what changes y'all would like to see in Section 4. That's great. You know, I, just, okay. I just don't want you to leave that process out. 
No, we don't want to leave the process out. So we want okay. you to take it, take a look at section four out of mine and, and bring back y'all suggestions and we'll just accept them and uh, okay. okay. Fair enough. So can we move on to five? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, right to inspect records, basically that, that says in the first state law that we have a right to go in and inspect inspect a record. That we did that with a uh, A and B commission. It's the same same situation. Okay. Uh, the qualifications applicant. All this is Conway's. If we'll go through section seven, unless you have a problem, section eight, let's skip it. Uh, yeah. The only thing that was changed, Charlotte. Yes. Where did we put that you had to pay the water office and not you? That was, that's not in seven or eight, right? Uh, section nine, I've, I've changed nothing. Section 10, I've changed nothing from Conway's. Do you have any problems with it? Section 11, section 12, nothing. I want to see where you paid the water office. Um, yeah, why? Charlotte changed it on me and just told me about it, and I didn't remember where it was. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's formerly it's on, said Payton City Park. I don't collect from you. Okay, it's, it's on. I take the money to the bank, and the water office collects all. Four and C. So, so. It needed to be changed because it did not come up earlier. On section 18, A3, we've charged $50 for a non profit 501c3. Uh, if you go down to C, section 4C, this is exactly like Conway's, with the exception. Exception A B, 14% on mixed drink, steak max, 10% on water office also. 10% on beer and wine. What? C's also the water office. And C's the water office. That's different where it's paid in Conway. I don't think you need that sentence, I don't think you need to say where it's received. It's paid to the city of Greenwood. That's fine. They can come in and ask where we pay this and I'll put them over there. But it's just clear to where they where they go take it. Yeah, I'm not to change what the ticket is. Yeah, I'm not going to change it. 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 I'm not going to Okay. So we're scratching received by the city, the city of Greenwood Water Office. Just the word water office. <coughs> okay. Just the word water office. Oh, two words. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he makes a good point. If somebody wrote you a check, you don't want a check made out to Greenwood Water Department. You want it made to the city of Greenwood. You just want to say received by the city of Greenwood. Just take out water office. Yes. Just those. Okay. Um, Turn the page. Uh, this is all Conway's. I've changed nothing. All the all the fines, five hundred dollars, two hundred fifty. That's all from Conway's ordinance. Conway's ordinance was passed in two thousand ten, and it's in effect today. So, Charlotte, have you kept up yes. the changes? Yes, Okay. I appreciate all this, Rod. Does does any uh, when Sunday got up spoke? Anybody can speak upon this. Does anybody have anything to say? I'll do one comment. Um, is there anything you can do to limit the hours to not so late at night? It refers here, yes, and that was something I thought of. Did y'all see? It refers yes. to, to the state's hour. Five in the last page, and we're five up there. We're just talking about the state. Is that right? This one. Hours of operation should be in accordance with the state statute in the title three. And so we could be more limited than the state is in one? Yes. And the really? state. So, John, what were you thinking? What is the state? I don't know what the state is. 10 o'clock. 9 o'clock. I think it's 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. I mean, it could be early, but I, I, was, I was just going to be on 10. What, what are the What does the state say? I don't know. They can sort of look at the 10. Can you look at it, Charlie? Can you look at it, Charlie? Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll research it. 
pick it up on the next screen. Uh, okay. yeah. No pressure. Is there anything else? I think Mr. Nile is on the screen. I had something on my list of questions. I don't think we're about to be this. You have a question? Yeah, I have a question about what the, the voting no against my word and such. I have a question, well, you know, okay, I can answer the question. If, will it fail? If what? It failed. Are you talking about on your ordinance? Yes. It did not pass the second reading. It failed the second reading. Can I ask that question? Okay, I think it might be a question. Yes, no, question. You want to go to ABL's turn and ask that question now? Sure. Sure. Um, so, to my understanding, um, so, how many votes do I have to override the council vote? Uh, I always did. I, I know that by, by law, I, I have to have a certain percent of votes to override the say no. And I just need to know. I think you're talking about initiative. Because, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of laws that change. Like pre office, I wouldn't have to have none of your permission. Uh, but also in office, uh, if I have a certain amount of votes from the city, uh, then I can call for a special election immediately and I wouldn't have to wait till uh, a voting run. That's going to be new law, I don't know where it is. Okay. Michael Perry. They currently have 1,372 of your voters. Uh, let's say you want alcohol here, not 250. Uh, it's 1,372 new people that will probably vote the next time you're all up for election. Uh, so, I mean, I have strong numbers of voting for alcohol and, and not against it. Um, it's ours. Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you for asking I I, I was just, I'm not sure if you're really just asking questions. I mean, if the lights can get all in the same room, you can listen to something else. I'm just trying to have a better understanding. I'm not as far as Captain Ross, I like to ask questions. You need to go find a bill named Ivy Owen. Okay. Yeah, the closing hours. It says you can request the negotiation to
And so it's up to you to do the special election. So I, mean, I don't guess my attorney is called the college attorney or how, how do you, I mean. I think I can help. They yeah, call the Secretary of State. They are the ones that, yes, that have all those rules. But the law changed in August, according to my attorney. Uh, and it's, 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 it's a special election. It's not an election that gets uh, done, it's like, I guess, when the Supreme Court's councilman or what the situation is. You just have your attorney call me. I'm okay, sorry. I'm going to be on a couple sure. of times. So okay. You just have to call me. All right. Bruce, did you have something? No, well, if I were through that, I was just going to say thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Okay. Um, I may be totally lost where we are. Number one, on no business. Number one, on board planning, building, work, revealing, replacing, ordinance number 13 10, commercial guidelines, third reading. Uh, Mr. Bell. Uh, Mayor, Council, uh, Mr. I'm here tonight uh, to have for the uh, third and final reading on the uh, uh, ordinance for feeling replacing ordinance uh, 1310. Rod has uh, uh, presented some changes that he was interested in making, but I didn't get those in time to put them in front of the Planning Commission last month. I got them last week. So, I guess I'll uh, we'll go. Well, I'm out of that. I just make a motion to table it another 30 days. Well, I say let's uh, let's table it and uh, give me a chance to bring it in front of the planning commission. You know, I don't know if they can do it in one meeting or not, and, and just put the table it until I reintroduce it. Okay. And I'll make a motion to table it until it's reintroduced. Uh, Mr. Henry, will it stay on third reading once it ever makes it back, or we have to go through it? No, it'll be on third reading. Okay. <coughs> okay, I'll second for table. That's a motion and a second. Table. Ms. Brown? Yes. Dr. Dawson? Yes. Yes. Mr. Daniel? Yes. Ms. Barry? Yes. Ms. Lansbury? Julie? Yes. Sonny? I guess. And don't yes. forget to take the ordinance we just put on the first reading of the planning commission. The one that you just got there? Right. Okay, yeah. I'll get yeah. a copy from. We're uh, interested in their feelings on that. Four, nine. I'll get a copy from Charlie. I'll go ahead and put it on the agenda. That way it, it's, it will be on the agenda, and then I'll get a copy from Charlie and the description to the planning commission. It's the placement and distance. And if it's the pleasure of the planning commission to go ahead and maybe they don't like it and they just soon set up entertainment districts, I'm open to that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've kind of looked at the entertainment district and, and there's, you know, it's kind of like uh, the, the same uh, thing of where, where we put electrical in, in Greenwood. You can't, you know, it's just, and the, the, the uh, there's not a 7-Eleven uh, even or anywhere in Greenwood that can sell beer. You, you just can't, you know, it, it's against this, all the, the boundaries there. And so an entertainment area would be about the same thing, you know, unless you want to put entertainment area outside of the city limits where there's not a church or school and you know the way Greenwood is set up there that it just kind of protects itself so you know I think what we need to do is you know look for commercial areas and, and keep it in the commercial areas and commercial uh, strip along there you know whichever way we go with it it'd just be kind of hard to carve out a place if you'd say okay this is entertainment area then take a look just at our language the way I've written. I've got a question. Yeah. Are we operating under the old guidelines still? Or we would still be operating in the present old guidelines? What's, what's present? You're talking about the commercial guidelines? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. You'd still be operating under the current ones. Not repealed yet. It's not repealed or amended or anything yet. So Which one? The current. The current. The current. The current. The current. Yeah. The commercial guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. We're still operating under that. Like I said, the. the the what started all this was the fact that the ordinance said that it was a uh, it wasn't a ordinance it was guidelines and we had a couple of builders say well you know that's all sounds good and fine but those are just guidelines so we don't have to 
I'll answer you getting that. Uh, that's you want me to point. withdraw my motion? That's and point I'm to get you. I don't want to keep that. And that well, I can well, well, I wonder what your last changes were. What was different from the second reading? This is the third reading. We don't usually work pretty good with that. Uh, I don't have I mean, I understand they haven't seen it, but I'm just saying we're, there was a reason why we went and changed all that stuff because we're, we don't have no teeth in well, there because of that. Because, you know, right now if you got somebody coming in, we'll let them Because I stick to the building, right? So let's just get out of mine. I ain't got no more. The more teeth I was trying to add, the more y'all are wanting to shift it back to them. And so we got shifted back to them. You know, one, one of the it, things it on that red no, huh? it passed the second reading, didn't it? It was on, it's on the second reading. Right. And we got into a conversation about the uh, percentage of high quality building the material. Rock, right, okay. Yeah. Let's put the way up set up in there. We didn't get into conversation. You and Sonny got into a conversation about the way that the way that's set up now, Lance, is that we have a minimum of ten percent. We can ask for a hundred percent, but we have a minimum of ten percent. Rod's idea was, you know, set it at fifty percent or a hundred percent. I'm not worried about percentages of the rocks on the front of the building. What I'm worried about is having some teeth with the guidelines. So we get somebody comes in here and builds something new the next month or so, and we don't have nothing in place. We're going to say. Well, that's a guideline, and I don't have to do that. So you want to pass it through the third reading? That was the whole point of, I mean, that's kind of why I was hesitant about the voting board, though, because it just was, I mean, you won't be there. We've, We've already done that motion. motion. Huh? We've already tabled. Well, but I thought that was the, the purpose yeah. of letting the commission, I mean, yeah, yeah, they didn't want the commission to do stuff behind us, us and mm -hmm. we were relying on the commission to kind of give us the input. Wait up. The commission's the one that, that drew up the ordinance to begin with. And, you know, we did that with the members on the, on the commission that included an architect, a builder, you know, and all the people that, that should be able to bring the, the ideas to the table. But the problem was, when we did it, we called it a guideline and not an ordinance. So everything, everything that was in that was approved by the planning commission, and we just didn't change that one word. And that's what we were trying to do. Charlie said we voted on it, so it's a good point. Well, I'm just saying, though, the bottom line is it's still a guideline. It ain't a, I mean, we can argue it all at home. It's nothing that's done. It's we'll hope we will. If it's a good board, if it's truly really more of a guideline, if this comes to show we've been better. Okay. okay. That's all I was asking. We did chase that rat around the room. All I was to make sure we had some people. It's just confusing, and, and, that, and like I said, as long as Mike says that we've got the ordinance to back us up. And, and so that's you know that's what we would refer to. We were just trying to clear it up so that when somebody picks it up, they know that it was a, a real ordinance. I'll keep it on the agenda for yes. grading until we clear it out. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bell. All right. Number three, street Lynn pickup policy. All right, let's turn this around a little bit. Let's get some positivity going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, let's see what you got. Any packets you guys should have our one policy, one pickup policy. We're for it. No. 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 I want to change bags from plastic. Uh, no more plastic bags. We need to be using compost, compost, composting paper bags. I know you're just taking everything and loading it up in a big pile and burning it, but we need to get to where we're composting and we need to get where we're starting to shred things. City going to buy those? We're going to buy them a machine. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure uh, it's I'm in going to talk about the bags. The bags? No, they're responsible for buying their own bags. What are we buying the bags? Mm hmm? They for the property owner? Lance has got that covered for buying property. <laughs> That's, that's another item on the agenda. I think the bags need to be composted. You're saying the citizens are responsible for those bags? They're responsible for our bags now. He's just saying we're going to take those big old paper bags and we're not going to take the plastic 30 gallon right. bag. Because all that plastic gets wrapped up in all the malt. All the compost. You need to keep in mind that a lot of these property owners are either as flames and the garden tree out there for weeks before we're out there to keep the 
So the paper bags are gonna get wet and raw before we get there and pick them up. We may not be picking that up often enough. That's a cute right? We're a little understaffed, right? This is not the positive you want to go. I thought we were going to turn this around. All right, let's start over. Let's start with some positivity here. All right, always hunger. Are we voting on this policy or are you just more positive? We're going to vote on it. 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 we are going to vote on it 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 we are going to vote on I think we need okay. to make a resolution though. Yeah. Can I can I say something? Tom Marsh, our uh, mm -hmm. our new finance guy, he said it's not even it's their responsibility to pick up limbs and leaves. He has been talking to the auditors quite a bit lately about the street. And you know how street revenue is restricted and they're picky about what street does and they want the labor and all the money that goes to them from the state, the use of street works is up to the attention. So now that they know that he's doing all of this recycle deal and limbs and da da da. So he gets no money from general fund. They are questioning it. Does he not get any money from general fund? So I mean, just the recycle center is out of the general fund. Where are you going to get it? So if we're going to take money from the general fund, then that solves that problem. Yeah, you're going to see some money going into the street for whatever they're doing. Well, that's the deal. Simon, I'm sorry. With an it's a lot of money. The general fund for the street fund. We can find it somewhere else. Well, this is what big cities do. They take out these lands. Well, they, uh, Tom says it goes through there. It's a, it's a contract that you will have with your sanitation. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, uh, I'm not sure that it doesn't do good for sanitation. So and, that, and that's where the issue I think is going to end up on, on, the, on the table of, if you will, whether we need to establish a sanitation department. And, and well, no, I'm, I'm only saying because we're hearing from the auditors, and as we all know, we like to do the right thing for the auditors. I'm not saying they are all that end result, but, but there is this issue of where does it happen? And, and, and of course, to Lance's question, where do you get the money? And, uh, well, this good old way you put it in the sanitation contract. Contracts can let out. Yeah, well. What, what started out is, is a good thing, uh, just that a good, a good policy for everybody in the city has turned out to be costly. I and mean, that's just what it all boils down to. We don't even have them call anymore, do we? No, talk this policy says. No, and then we also started them curbside pickup at 6 a.m. So some things have changed since this. If we, if we handle all the calls, we not It's sorry. crazy. We, have to act. we still get calls. So y'all yes. are wanting to put this in the sanitation contract next time? Yes. Okay, well, it's poor timing to bring it up after the contracts went out. It's not our, Tom brought it to our team. We're just going to have to, we, we're going to have to deal with it until that contract comes back up, and then we'll have <coughs> the contract. Well, I mean, like, what is Tom's, I mean, saying that that's a, a state violation or whatever? He was just saying, he's just saying it's not the street department's job. To well, that's because of the money. Because of the because money. Of state. Because of their um, the street money. It takes a lot of time and money for the street department to do what they do. Uh, Anything else? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do. And you might ask if we've been doing that for years, and the answer is yes, but, but we, and I'm not, we have someone in there that is listening. So it's paying close attention to the auditors. Put a figure on it. What's the cost? Oh. Some operating budgets, a million dollars a year. It takes a quarter of one month to do. To go one day a month? You're not spending. one day a month. It's a week a month. It's a week a month. They don't do it all. Month. Month. Just to pick up the limbs. You're, you're spending one week a month, a yes. fourth of your time. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to say. We need to find a place because we leave for the citizens just to dump it and take it. Load off of them, like we were talking about them. So, that, you know, here you get up here, if you're arrested, you know, it's still, it's still not, it doesn't solve the problem. But still, it's going to take forth this time. I mean, you're saying that you're just going to provide a place for us. Yeah, that's picked up. I mean, that's because it's getting abused. 
Yeah. But the whole point of having the limb pickup was people that didn't have any yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 We had a place to dump it. I think 75% of people that use it don't have an ability to load it up and take it. It's a little old ladies. Mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. Maybe not that much. Mm -hmm. Maybe 20 there's, there's people that have to throw ones that aren't pretty good and borrow and match and one brown. I'm just saying, though, I mean, I, I think it's a service that we provide that's it's good for for certain things, and, I, and it's kind of like we do with other things we offer services to people that need stuff. I mean, a little old lady calls and says she needs a lift pickup. We might, we might do that with people like myself. I'm not, I'm not going to take limbs out to the road. I'm going to get rid of them. You know, I mean, I'm just saying this. I mean, I said that before. I have part no property on in my book. I agree. I mean, I have no problem helping somebody that needs, that needs help. But don't okay. we have these landscape companies that are cutting this stuff down and piling it out there because they're not going to pay the to pay money because old Simon's going to buy and pick it up. Oh, Mr. Mayor and I drove by a lot today that has zero trees on it and a big pile of the ones out there. Mm -hmm. I think we ought to treat those like people with high grades. That's why I was just saying that you're, you're responsible for We had a place to dump it. We had a machine to mulch that stuff up and then turn back around and, you know, do whatever. But just having the place to do it, you know, to offer them to dump it. Well, there again, I mean, if we, you know, I, I like her idea, but, but there again, you talk about, you know, tree services, what would prevent them from just driving in there, you know, all day long and, and dumping stuff that really should be just Well, then you have, I, that's what I say, you have to have a system of some sort of way behind lock and key, you had to come by the city, you know, mm -hmm. and I mean, I know it's another added part to somebody, but. But something would have to be. Well, I mean, it's kind of like part of our recycling system is that we need to have somebody there to kind of supervise that because if there's nobody there, then lots of things get dumped that right. they shouldn't right. be done. I mean, there's a lot of what is to it, but I just think it would. And if it's all, to me, all part of kind of a big recycling system is that, hey, this is where, you know, somebody's there saying just to verify. Just a prime example, the guy that's remodeling the house down for me, am I that guy they Things like four or five dump truck loads or you know, stuff. You know, we did the recycling center, right? You know, sir, that's under general fund. That's under what? General fund? Okay. So who, who goes over and mans that and kind of trades yeah, that? They well, there, there again, that's my point. So we don't claim it. It's claimed under general fund because we can't have it under the street department. So, it need, so this limb ticket needs to go, like AC said, just all together with recycling. Yeah, we've been, the, the mayor and I have been discussing the whole uh, recycle center and, and manning it and uh, different options. I, I, I was talking to him about maybe hiring somebody to, to work in the recycle center, but I can't really hire somebody for the recycle center because it's a general fund issue and I can't pay for somebody to labor a street fund to man that. Um, is there a way to, if we had somebody that we hired to deal with the recycling center, could they share their time doing the limb pickup as well? Um, Picking it up or, or supervising the place? Yeah, you know, that's the drop-off location, of course. Um, now, if you're talking about shredding all the limbs, that really didn't be two or three people for the safety reasons. You don't want somebody there operating the chipper by themselves because some accidents happen. So, What's the reality of, uh, of the city's position being we're only going to pick up limbs that meet whatever requirements for those who need? I don't know how you say it. How are you assessing? I don't know how you assess the fact that they need it. Yeah, you got to police it somewhere else. Well, that's kind of back to that deal we did with the I don't know how we assess it. We... You can't get your trash out to the curb, no. but we do. Right, exactly. It says something in that sanitation contract. It does about that, you know, I mean, you got to. Yeah, they have to. You yeah. know, the curb, the curb service. Yeah. They yeah. have to. They have to set. They have to call and let us know. Right. And, and I don't know that any of us have gone and checked that. You know, that's that's up to the. 
percent. That's up to Alphys at this particular time. Yeah. If that person needs that, that. No, it, yeah. I'm not laughing at you at all. No, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it just says that the last of this is this, so that the street department can see that there's no garage or dirt inside. It just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we don't even want to let that open. Let's be honest with you, because if they if they're left open, they get wet. Actually, we, we, this is not the latest letter. Is it not the latest? No, the, the latest letter is online. The, the latest the latest letter we uh, put a waiter for max weight. On the bag. So what, what I mean this feels like this is something I should know. Well and I'm just saying it just feels like that, that this is an expensive undertaking, it's time consuming, that we that we stumbled into at the ice storm years ago and, and now we've created a monster that we can't continue to feed. Uh, legally, without without sending general fund money to it, I mean, what happens if we just stop limping? You know, what, what happened before the ice storm happened? I mean, what, what happens if we just say, look, it's sort of going to be a big deal, and we're we're not going to pick up limbs anymore? First due to the month was what was before the ice storm. That was always the generic. That's so always we call down here and say, I got limbs at 44 West Denver. Okay, and they come by first Tuesday month. Well, I mean, I don't, well, it I still don't, starts that way, it's just that it lasts a week. Right. I mean, we still yeah. say right. or, you know, just there's 15,000 more houses. But right. are these people, these limbs you're picking up, in your estimation, is it people that need our help, or is it just people abusing the system? I think it's just, uh, you know, of course, there's some sure. that, that need our help. Let's, let's be clear. I don't think it's people abusing are abusing the system. system. I mean, uh, if you, I if mean you we told me, the if you yeah. told me this is the system for the city, you're gonna yeah, I'm going to say, okay, quite cool. I'm glad I live in the city where they pick up the limbs, and I'm going to stick them out there. Well, but good. if you if you tell me that's not a service you offer, okay, I'm going to find another place to take my limbs. You know, I, I, I mean, we're enabling folks. I, I, I might be able to address your concerns a little bit. Uh -huh. I talked to, to Chief Ryan. Uh, well, actually, he came to me after the last meeting, the last, last city council meeting, because he was concerned that people would start burning in the yards yeah. again. So if we were to do that, you know, I'd strongly encourage maybe doing a farm ban, maybe in the city, the farm and brush and the debris. Uh, he's, he's scared that if we do what we want to pick up all together, that there's going to be an increase in fires, wildfires, or house fires, whatever the uh, case might be. So now what are people going to do with this? You know, I'm going to take it to the Fort Smith. I'm going to go on. Double is what I'm doing. I mean, I just pile it in the mm -hmm. trailer and haul it up there, and they've got a place for me. they got a compost, and I pay my $22 or whatever it is, and I drive to wherever they tell me to drive, and I don't. It's just like I did with all my large items and other trash. I just, large items and, we have. And the main reason, one of the main reasons I do that with my live stuff is, number one, I want to start a fire, because I get out there and start a fire. And number two is, I don't want to cut mine into, I don't want to cut mine into little sections and time up. I just want to sailor take it and dump it. Well, I know. Sure. How many of these people? I'm just telling you, I think there'd be people to find a way to take it. This is a modification I made last year. I just printed it wrong. Pretty old. Oh. I'm old. How's this different than what we had? Yeah. Um, it, it, it doesn't have the requirement you call it in because the, 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 we couldn't handle the amount of calls. And then it also states that 6 a.m. There's also a change in. Um, so it's garbage. The, uh, the weight, you know, um, must the weights of the bags must not be more than 40 pounds. Um, I think that's pretty much the, the gist of it. Other, other communities, I mean, they, when I lived in Fayetteville, there was a little pickup, but I, I just assumed it was a sanitation problem. I mean, in other communities, yes. it's a street or is it sanitation? Well, if it's a street, it's a street and sanitation department combined. A lot of cities have street and sanitation. And I, uh, you know, I proposed to, to the last time we did the contract, we bought a couple trash trucks to take over the sanitation. They do it in Conway, but they do it in coordination with the recycling. 
that would do sanitation. Sanitation does not the street. Yes. They have they do have their own sanitation system, which I'm not I'm not saying we need one. Sure. No, that's just that another sounds like, it sounds like we may be in a situation where depending on what the state auditors and our finance director says, well we may be hanging in a corner with how we utilize the street now anyway. I think we definitely need to write it into the contract the next time we let the contract out. So, what if the next time we do budget, our new finance director agrees with the state auditor and says this is inappropriate use of funds, and now we're forced to make a change in our policy? Can we not amend our sanitation contract? Is there not language in there that allows us to? No. I think you will definitely be talking about it at budget. We'll find a way. Because we will bring it out. Well, we want to table this particular issue until we can, I mean, I don't yes. know. It's kind of like the guidelines that we just went through with the, you know, the, we need to, there need to be some kind of guy, I mean, it needs to be a, doing something, we need to know what to do or not to do. Or. What about, you, you and I talked a little bit, Simon, about not doing it, as, I mean, not every, not once a month, every quarter, I mean, to. I think, I, really, to, until we come up with a good option, picked up or charge three just as soon as the way it is right now because at least we're getting something done and then we can work on a better alternative in the future. Well it's a cap 22 about the quarterly deal because one you think well they'll take it themselves and then after a month they'll think my gosh I'll just do it myself or you come back in three months and there's five every house has one in so instead of just so a week you're picking right. up for a month for a month so we can tell well and I mean as far as I mean, limbs are I mean, one thing, but I mean, as far as grass clippings, hedge clippings, mm -hmm. you know, things like that, I mean, do, again, is that always in the street corner? Or, because I think the uh, sanitation doesn't want to. They, they will not take it. Yeah, that's 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 that, that is specific in the contract. They will There's not take a dead bug in my trash can, it will leave the whole trash can. And so, I mean, I would think definitely. Clippings and you know, uh, I mean that's going to be more than you know once a quarter. I feel like y'all, yes sir, go ahead. Simon, in your policy, so what's the diameter requirement on the limb? Right now it's six inches. Where is that in here? It's the the inch inch. Inch. Oh, it's old last header down there at the bottom. Huge double bolt yeah, yeah, bolt space, yes. all caps. <laughs> Well, no, the first one is the old one. The one that refers to garage instead of garbage. I think the diameter is too big. We acknowledge, though, yeah. we did not. I think six inches would cost you firewood in my book. You know, I'd get that at the firewood. And six inches. I think the diameter should be two inches or less. Two inches or less. You know, now the majority of our pickup is usually two inches or less. To be honest with you, right now, so it's very seldom that we're actually picking up. Three. You're just picking up clippings, right? I think two inches or less is clippings, and that's a service to the city that we should provide. But beyond that, we're picking up cut trees. I don't yeah, all the tree service. I agree. And that might cut down. On well, you've already said the majority of it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to wait your preference. Simon, is that we wait until we get clarification? I like Rod's so, uh, amendment to this. We'll make those changes. Okay. Yeah, so we'll just roll with it for now. So that's we need good. to vote on that change. Hey, but I, I tell you what, I'd like to somehow get the word out. I don't know what kind of, I don't know what the people of this town read. If they read the paper, if they look on the website, or I'm sure Facebook's probably the way to go. We need to get this word out that here's what we're fixing to do with limb plan. And, and if you don't clean it up yourself, it's bigger than two inches. We have ordinances with the junky lawn and stuff. We'll come start finding it for the limbs and they start piling up. But we need to make it clear, let everybody know what our policy is. And, I mean, really get going on is this is a huge problem about the bad straight dogs. I think. I mean, we need to, we need to shout from the mountaintop on this deal. Once we get something set, set in stone, you know, I, I just feel like this is a big one here that needs to be taken care of. 
Well, it is because it takes them just a lot of time. I mean, they, these guys can be doing so much right. more yeah. than what they're supposed to be doing. And the men I'm in, we get to do it even more with the auditor and the budget. And the well, I think, it, but I think that may be our out. Right. You know, just stop doing it. Look, we, we would love to keep doing it for you, but it's. But I guess right. on the other, other side of that, I mean, we would still be picking up grass clippings, would we not? Or, uh, I know this company when people have, uh, you know, leaves dropping out. I mean, I know one, you know, Earl Lang says she swept up well, I you know, think, 15 bags of leaves. I think, I think if, the, if the auditor's stance is that the street department can't pick up leaves, can do, they can't pick up edge clippings or leaves or anything. They can do street maintenance, street work, or anything else. We're going to have to budget separately. Yeah, right. We still can budget that. We can choose as a, as a city to budget general fund money for hedge clipping pickup, but it's going to have to be general fund and not street money. Unless. I may allow a transfer of money from general to street if we say cover the entire well, I, mean, I think on, on one hand we are a Tree City USA, and that's one of the big reasons why is because we're using that, right, Sonny? Yes, we are using that to get our credits. The lid pickup? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's almost probably ninety percent. You, you figure the the equipment per hour, the manpower per hour, and all that, and you add that up, and it, you know, I think <laughs> normally it's forty. Forty-five, fifty thousand dollars that we could use to apply to the tree. Usually, the land pickup pick gets us the Tree City USA designation, yeah. just on its own, and then also it plays into us being a fire wise community. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this: What, yeah. what do we get out of the Tree City USA? What do we get out of it? We're cool. We get a sign. We get stickers. I was just wondering if there was like funding or helps with the you know that we pay for. Yeah. We pay for the sign? Yeah. We have quite a time for it. Our our uh, sanitation contract is for three years, is that right? Is it a three year what? contract? Our sanitation contract. Yes. It changes from five to three. Years. There's there's outs in the contract. I remember so any either party can cancel. Yeah, it doesn't call them a the mark yeah. I just assume. Well I understand that I <laughs> I would be interested in, you know, you mentioned that you brought up the idea of sanitation part of purchasing trucks and, and that's, but, but you brought it up, it came, to, it came to us sort of late in the process of this deal. I'd be happy to entertain and hear your ideas on how that runs in the black. You know, if you think the city can run a sanitation department in the black, it doesn't cost us money and to provide some of these services in a way that's as good or better than the contract can buy. I'd listen to that. It might not want to be what we want to do, but I think it'd be worth it. You know, the research that I did on it is a very viable option. Um, you know, sanitation companies wouldn't be in business if there wasn't money in it. Yeah. So. Now, you guys could just come in with a separate contract just for them to pick up and say you've got a you dump trailer and we charge this every month. We, we can put it out to bid. We can put it out to bid and let people come in and bid on the limit. We'll just reach out to the Current sanitation contract saying, where do I have a limb pickup? I like that idea that Richard's got. Don't yeah. put it over bid for, I mean, Greg K might be on it. Yeah. Or Michael Kessler. Just don't put it for a He's retired. He's retired. He's retired. He's retired. Why didn't you say that 20 minutes ago? <laughs> so if we put it out for the bid, and we accepted it. Will we pay out a general fund or will yeah, we pay out a general fund? And and if, we can, if we can go buy some trucks and run a business that, that stays in the black, out of water, and we pay a fee, and we pay a fee if that, I mean, I don't, it may not make any business sense at all, but if it does, you could monitor a contract for years see if we made any money off of it. Yeah. Still one year contract. You talk, are you referring to the Lynn Pickup only? I'm talking about sanitation department. Well, again, I'm talking about the Lynn Pickup only. Pick only put it out for bid. Right. I'm going to put it out for bid. I'm going to scorn some other way besides the city to do it. I'm also, besides the street farm to do it, I'm also for listening to proposals and ideas about the sanitation department if it doesn't cost the city a bunch of money. You know, if it's something that can pay for itself. The initial uh, purchases of the equipment would be the, the hard part, but I don't remember off the top of my head. I think it was one year you pay for one of your trucks, and it was profit alone. So every, every year, theoretically, you should have enough money to buy one truck. 
you got to start out with two trucks, though, so just get a breakdown. Well, I'll tell you this, the Sports Men Sanitation, their department out there is just not frugal at all because they've got so stinking much money. I mean, I've, that's come from some of the different department people up there. They let them, I mean, they, they got all the bells and whistles in their offices and their training rooms. And, I mean, it's because it's 100% profitable. They do have a nice facility up there. I mean, I went there today. I went there today and dumped the 16 foot trailer bowl stuff and it was 80 bucks. We've dumped things. We've been what our dump fees have been. No, we don't. Because they own the dump. So. No, right. they're all, I don't, we don't need a dump. But I'm just saying, though, what I mean, just this is just big customer. I mean, I, I figured that probably, if it was work right, it would be a, I'm not saying a profit, but it would be, I think you'd like Lee said, I think it'd be a, you could do it to black, but it would run back. Right. We're, we're all the way down to number four. Hey, do we, do we want to move his street stuff up? We talked about moving. We, we did talk about that. I mean, there's uh, a couple other street things. Do you want me to talk about number four? Yes. Right yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So I, I contacted Mr. Comer about the property he's sitting on. Um, okay, yeah. but 100 percent of the property is in floodway itself. He How much? 100 percent of it, all of it, is in a floodway. So he booked that property up, and he wants a lot of money for it. So you know, 450 thousand dollars for just a little, little bit of it, not even the whole property. Um, the problem that I had, the, the reason I stopped really pursuing anything with that is because I'm worried that if we were to purchase that property from Mr. Comer, that the Corps of Engineers might become aware of all that field material that's placed in the floodway, and it could be a legal cause for the city. I think at one time, back 20 years or more ago, they were injecting waste that property as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so so I haven't really followed up that up anymore because of, first off the prices are way high. Um, for ten acres you sell down on Center Street, that's half the price of this property and it's like a good property. You know, so then we can have other avenues for something along the lines. But then it's become you know since since we talked last month we also figured we found out the recycle center and stuff is Primarily something that the street department should be spending money on. So there becomes another issue right there in all that itself. Um, we don't want any part of this back here, man. You're running from it. We don't have it already. No, that's, that's scary. Yeah. Okay. But I'm, I'm not sure why the court hasn't jumped in there yet. I agree. Right. Oh, yeah. And, and the you know, ADEQ. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we're no. Yeah, four is a no go. Okay, if you want to move, let him bring eight up. You know. Sure. Done. About the resolution for camera system. So this resolution is for is purchase of camera system of the front and rear entrances or a shop, as well as the recycle facility. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the recycle facility. The reason I also included the recycle facility into this estimate was because the Sebastian County Solid Waste District is proposing to pay possibly half of it, pending approval of their budget. So if that, that half was approved, then it would come back to the street, the street department. Um, it's terribly expensive with camera system. That sounds very high. Very, it very, is, very, very, very. Um, it, it's get, it, it had, they had to install a new pole in the recycling facility. Um, and there's quite a few cameras involved with the system. Um, and then it's all Wi-Fi, it's wireless, but it don't have um, a lot of wiring available already in place for the, for the system. So that you have Wi-Fi uh, wi repeaters um, to take that Wi-Fi out and also uh, this is this, this isn't like a like a home security system. This is a high dollar camera system. It's like apples and oranges. What's the one of the the, the pavilion? What was that? It's indoor and all that. But, 
Well, part of them didn't We've got seven cameras, half of them are outside. How much was that? Remember? We should ask that for the week. And that's that includes DVD on monitoring also. Is this the only system you've looked at? Um, it is. I contacted a um, uh, company there, I can't remember their name, for Smith that specializes in this kind of work, and they're the ones that give us one. They may have bid for this, and they came out and visited with me. Um, you know, we had, we had a, lot of, a lot of people dumping tires and refrigerators and just garbage at nighttime, even. Um, this just became a real big issue, and then we had the issue. Mr. Hammy and I have discussed about the stuff that came up uh, missing. Did it give us a little bit better control? Did it give me better control of, what, of our assets and um, whatnot? I, I guess if we find somebody, you know, dumping stuff illegally, I mean, do we have that addressed about how we handle that or? There's state statutes uh, that prevent that and not. There's a thing that cool when you do it right. I don't have to call ADT right here or something else. But uh, they came out the best case and shut it down. We've got, we've got quite a few tires this year just left outside of our gate. These camera systems will hopefully catch those people in the act and we'll be able to see their you know, license plates and be able to turn them over to the wall. Yes, sir. Okay, some of them might be on scouts. I've got, they're pulling tires from uh, Greenwood Lake on the trail. I'm telling them to put them over there by, by the dumpsters. So. Yeah, they can't do that. So where do they do it? Uh, pull them in the lake? <laughs> See, if you do that, we have to pay to have it disposed of. The All right. City does. So we got tires on public property. That's owned by the city of Greenwood. I'm cleaning them up. Can the city not find a way just to get them disposed of? If I've got free labor, dragging them out of the lake, dragging them out of the woods, and put them right here by the dumpster. I would say yes, but if you're not telling anybody that you're putting them there, then it's not. Okay, I'm telling everybody now. Yeah. I'm putting tires over here by the dumpster that's coming off of, out of the public parks and out of the lake. So we're doing free cleanup and free labor and putting them right here. Well, I think the city, they can, the city can find a way to properly dispose of it. And I, I, I agree that they can, but if uh, somebody, Joe Citizen comes by and sees a bunch of tires there, and he says, oh, I can do that then too. And I, I, I commend the Boy Scouts for doing that, but I think that, again, that's kind of falls back to where campus system, we can monitor that. It's okay for the Boy Scouts, great, you know, but if it's somebody else, no, just not a, a, nobody, not nobody's ever told me that tires should be in place there for us to get rid of them. There's, there's 10 of them coming. Yeah, but nobody's ever notified me in the past. You're being notified. Yeah. There's 10 coming. Yeah. Do you think you could ask one of the tire shops here in town that recycles old tires, that they would take those? They usually have a, a fee, like $3 per tire. Environmental fee? Environmental fee. They're coming off the city city property. The city can pay that environmental fee. What about the big roll off over there? You can't put them in a roll off. They won't take it at the dump because the tires they they float, they have to they've got a proper disposal. So it seems like they throw everything in there. Right? Well, that may be where they they end up. But we're, I'm not gonna put them in there. I guess they also kind of on a countywide cleanup. I mean, do they not? No. They, they were taking them, but they're so costly to get rid of now that I, I remember uh, I, was, I was captain on the Milltown Washington Fire Department, and we did a cleanup, uh, I want to say like three or four years ago. And they still allowed tires, and they had a trailer full of tires. And at that, after that, they did some more, and they haven't done it since because they got so many tires to get thrown away. And you know, a lot of people just don't want to pay that fee when they get the tires thrown. So, they say, well, I'll just keep it, you know, I might use it. And then they don't, they dump it somewhere, like his plate or uh, 
outside the gate of the recycle center, or the case might be. Well, with this uh, camera system, I guess is it a one-time fee or is it an ongoing fee? Yes, it's one-time one-time fee. I've got an answer for our system up there: sixty-seven hundred dollars. So last year, you're right, you got seven grand, and then a hundred and nine dollar a month monitoring fee, and that goes to the parking lot. So just the camera system. If you've got your own recorder, about sixty-seven. Uh, well, we don't have a. We have room in the budget for nine hundred dollars. I mean, I think we have to have some type of monitoring up there for the recycling center. I mean, I wouldn't mind exploring something a little cheaper if it's possible. But we we did cheaper um, prior to me coming here. There is a can, there is a couple of cameras in the recycling center now. They go to a little monitor about this big and mechanic, but you can't. They don't they don't work anymore. First off, but you know what you can see. Is that is, is there's no recording, there's no nothing, you know. Plus the wiring involved with that, it would be, be time consuming and expensive to install. Why are we doing this when we're just weeks away from going through budget? Why is this just why don't we just <coughs> finish your budget? Not a lot of business presenting to you guys. You can just spend it immediately in January one. You can go out and buy your cameras. Let's look at it in the budgetary process, which is fixing to happen. Well, to answer your question, the money is there. I mean, uh, obviously, I mean, it's not, wasn't for that specifically, but it's there available. Uh, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's y'all's choice to, to when, when he does it. You know. But it was pointed out to me that this is not really for the recycling center as much as it is for the street department, correct? I mean, you can, you can aim a camera over there, but it's really for... It would have, it would have uh, cameras over the recycle center. I mean, the conversation has almost gone more yeah. about this. If we're taking money out of street, we need to make sure that the, this part is the street. Yeah, the same when, I, when I spoke with, uh, with Tom about this, I said, you know, because there will be cameras in the you front. You can encompass. And he said, he says, well, it's just kind of a who pays for it. Well, it? We three talked about it because he was bothered by that. Yeah. He said recycle center shouldn't be paid out of street. Which, yeah. which, on the same token, if you had a camera, I don't know where your cameras would be, but one could actually be aimed over. I agree with Rob, we need probably just before that budget time, but I will, to Simon's defense, I will say because I, I have cameras at my house, and I mean, they're not inexpensive, but they're not, I mean, but you get what you pay for, trust me. I, I mean, my stuff works, it records, DVR, the whole nine yards, but it, you yeah. for a different purpose. Though. Right. Oh, yeah. I already ran on my cameras. I mean, they're, they're decent, but for what he's wanting to do, I mean, it's going to cost some money. Yes, I mean, to me, you won't be able to read a, a license plate. Or if you're going to, if you're going to do that, that, if you want to be able to see that and get us through, you're going to have to, I mean, you're going to have to spend some money. I mean, it's, I mean, just say So the money is not budgeted for something else. We talked, they just said it was in the budget, but it was somewhere else. It was yeah, it's just a resolution change. Okay, so what do you wish the pleasure of the council on this? Well, if you say it's already in there, I'll say, look, you know, go ahead and put it in there, and then it'll be, it will be included in the budget for next year. Well, no? No. No, no, he's asking to spend it this, this year's budget. That's what he's asking to put. That's your. When I say, I say it's in there, it's if you have the money, and, and you know, I'd say let's go ahead and do it. I mean, because I think it's a, it's a problem. It's an issue. I need to have it. He's, he's transferring it, right? I mean, you're really not, you're taking it from it. Right, just increasing the spending right. he's right. checking for right. Yeah, yeah, money's there. Yeah. You don't spend that money by the end of the year. Uh, yeah, but you know, you just have to rebudget. You got to rebudget. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. They, they see if we're going to, at some point, we're going to buy this camera system. Yeah, I was I mean, I don't see why we need to kick it down the road. I make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second. Brown? Yes. 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 Daniel. Yes. Yes. No. Yes, sir. Yes. It passes by majority. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wally. So, there are two other uh, finance resolutions that have involved the street this morning. Uh, 12 and 13. You guys are cool with us. Yeah. 
Keep going. 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 Do we have that resolution in front of us? Yeah, it was yeah. in your head all the time. Again, that's uh, that, that, that's, that's, yes. there is room in the budget for that, isn't there? Yes. Oh, uh, three parking So you're saying it's going to just come out? It's coming out as a charity support. I'm actually at a resolution. Sir? Do you remind me how much you made that for? $2,000. $2,000. $2, yeah. I'll second. You have a motion to second to approve. Mr. Brown. Yes. Dr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Powell. Yes. Mr. Daniel. Yes. Tim Terry. Yes. Lance <laughs> Terry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You got to buy uniforms. No, that's cheap. I thought it said street uniforms. I thought it was street uniforms. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have no clue where we are. Anybody I think we're the Oaks. Wherever we are. Number six, plenty. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Well, Mr. Bell's on his way up. Chief, how's your father-in-law? He's talking. Yeah. Not very well. Okay. He doesn't feel anything. I, I failed to. To let the council know, I meant to do it all that long. We got it was interesting to say the least. So your father-in-law coded earlier today. And yeah, they did CPR ten minutes on him. So yeah. I thought we were pretty fortunate to be able to talk to him. Yeah. Jessica, there with he's been to Bill at the hospital there. Backyard, 
because for well, I've got the same argument on my backyard. Lance has the same argument on his backyard. Well, like I said, the planning commission looked at it. They they recommended uh, vacating it. Uh, that's that's up to you, gentlemen. So there are you saying there isn't? The planning commission said that there is enough of an easement in the front of these. Yeah, that's all the utilities are already there. They're already there. Yeah, but you know. They come back someday and they want to run big fiber optic lines where we can get the news, latest, greatest TV and all this, and we don't have it. We give it away, and that makes no sense. We still have the easement in front. Most utilities, most utilities in Greenwood are running in the back. Some, some are, some are. I just don't understand why we give that away, and that, that argument that seems to make sense. And you don't know what you have off the of Dawson Valley. If there's 20 feet off the of Dawson Valley. And it looks like you have plenty because most lots in Greenwood are 10 on one side and 10 on the other. And that way you have a 20 foot easement that the city owns that we, that's where our revenue comes from on uh, franchise fees. We could be giving up half of our rights to have utilities run things through there for franchise fees. I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. Well, on the other side of that, if we do, I guess, the easement in Dawson Valley, you know, I mean, if that was... That's, yeah, that's, that, that's what I said. If there's 20 feet over there, I can see it. Okay. Well, is that what this dotted line represents on here? Is that that easement? So what is the distance there? I don't know. No. 10 feet. Well, I mean, that shows a 10-foot green space. Yeah. If that dotted line represents an easement line, it is about 30 foot. Yeah, that's pretty wide. Mm -hmm. That's the buffer that that the uh, developer left there to We're separate Dawson Valley. Dawson Valley and, and uh, the Oaks. Where do, you, where do you see 30 feet? I'm just banking on, he's got 10 foot designated where it says green space. Just kind of eyeballing the size from the edge of that green space that thought it was about three times as wide as that 10 foot line. And I was drawing the scale, yeah. Okay.